God recently showed me through a proverb that I still struggle with applying the principles of true success and humility in my life. So come along, let's talk about that. A while back, I opened up my YouTube and looked at the analytics, and as I was looking at the statistics, I was disappointed. The numbers weren't where I wanted them. They weren't where I thought they should be. The watch time, the, um, the total views, the subscriber count. Yeah, I know I put up a video just a week there uh, about uh, you know, 10, reaching 10,000 uh, subscribers, and I am excited about that. But this lesson actually relates to that because I thought that things should be more than they were in every category. After looking at these statistics and seeing what they were and what they weren't, um, I, I did my daily Bible reading. And for that day, it was Proverbs 22.4. And that one hit me like a hammer. Or it was like a wrecking ball. I don't know. But it hit me hard. And I want to look at that proverb, talk a little bit about what God showed me and hopefully what I believe God is still teaching me, and I, hopefully I'm, I'm learning it, and maybe he can show you things and teach you things and help you along. So let's go ahead and look at that. I'll go ahead and read it. It's a short two-line verse. So let's go ahead and read that. I'll go ahead and put it on the screen. The reward for humility and fear of the Lord is riches and honor and life. Before we can get into what this proverb means, we have to first begin by understanding what is a proverb. Some people think proverbs are giving guarantees, giving promises, when that's not really what they do. Proverbs, rather, are observations of life and history that convey spiritual principles. Now, in this proverb that we read, the spiritual principle that we see is that true success begins and ends with a relationship with God. Now, as we look at this proverb, we're going to see two things. One, what is true success? That's the first lesson that God is trying to show me. What is true success? The second lesson we're going to see is how do we achieve it? So let's go ahead and look at the first one. Now, as we read this proverb, we can look at it and say, hey, it talks about riches and honor and life. Riches and honor. Riches. We can be quadrazillionaires. Yay! No! That's not what this is saying. This is not a promise that you'll become richer than Bill Gates or the whatever his name is over in Qatar, Qatar, however you pronounce it, or the Saudi Arabian prince or, or, or you know, Microsoft, that's Bill Gates, or, you know, Apple or whatever. It's not a guarantee that you'll become super rich. Warren Buffett is not the goal here. Um, Although his soul, God wants to save his soul. But being Warren Buffett or, you know, or, 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 or the richest people in the world is not what this proverb is about. This proverb is not saying you can become super rich. It's not saying you, become, you can become the greatest person to ever walk the earth. That's Jesus, by the way. He's the greatest one to ever walk the earth. It is not saying that you will never, ever, ever get sick and never, ever, ever physically die. We all will physically die. And... That's not what this is saying. Rather, this idea of riches and honor and life, or success, is defined by the preceding statement, talking about humility and fear of the Lord. And it's actually further defined by the larger context of Proverbs, and that is how to please God. This larger section is talking about how to please God. So in that context, we see the success, true success, is not getting more money. It's not having the number one YouTube channel. It is not about having the nicest cars or having the, the best looking spouse that for eye candy, it's about having the most successful career, having the biggest house. That is not true success. True success is doing what pleases God with the things that he's given us. And the more we use those things to please God, the more opportunities and more resources will be available to us to please God with them. Now, that doesn't mean you'll be rich. You may stay lower 
economics, uh, middle economics, whatever. That's not the goal. The goal isn't to achieve material things. The goal is to achieve, achieve God's glory and to achieve God's service. That's the goal. So true success is not about what we have in this world. True success is about who we have in our hearts. Now, with that in mind, how do we achieve true success? In the first half of this proverb, Solomon indicates that true success, or being blessed by God, comes by how we deal with other people and how we deal with God. How we relate to other people and how we relate to God. And we see that expressed through the words humility and the phrase fear of the Lord. Humility deals with or addresses how we deal with other people, how we relate to those around us. And this is something part of what I struggle with. Uh, I'll be honest, I have a bit of an ego. Uh, who doesn't, right? But I, I do. Um, I've struggled with that for a lot of my life. And my ego, though, is fragile. Uh, again, whose isn't, right? But I struggle with pride and ego. And that's why I was so disappointed when I looked at my YouTube uh, stats, when I looked at the analytics and they weren't where I wanted them to be, my ego took a bruising. And then when I read this passage, God's like, yeah, remember that humility thing? Um, you're not all that. You need to be humble. You need to be humble. And the way to be humble and the way to deal humbly with other people and not be egotistical with them, not be prideful with them, not be judgmental with them, not be condescending to them, the way to deal with them and to have that spirit of humility is to have a right relationship with God, that is, fear of the Lord. Now, fear of the Lord is a phrase in Scripture that essentially means submission. Submit to God. We have to submit to the authority of God. We have, su have to submit to the rule of God. We have to submit to the sovereignty of God. We have to submit to the lordship of God. We have to submit to his guidance, his teaching. We also have to submit to his love and his grace and his mercy. And we also have to submit to his judgment and his discipline. We have to submit to God. That's essentially fear of the Lord. If we have a fear of the Lord, if we love, follow, respect, worship, serve God, then the Holy Spirit will start transforming us from within. We'll start working in our minds and in our hearts and in all aspects of us, making us more like Christ. Because the more we strive to know Christ and follow Christ and, and, and serve Him, then the more we're going to be like Him. And the Holy Spirit will do that and thus our relationship with other people will come along and we will have a greater spirit of humility. And the Holy Spirit will take care of that. So there's an interplay between them. There's a relationship between our relationship with God and our relationship with those around us. But if we want to have true success, we need to have a right relationship with God and a right relationship with others. So let's bring this home. That morning when I looked at my stats and read this verse, it was like being hit from two sides and getting the same lesson in both. And that lesson is that I needed to learn what true success is and needed to learn how to achieve it. And maybe you need to learn that lesson. Maybe God's trying to show you that you need to rediscover what true success is and how to achieve true success. True success is not found in the things that we possess. It's not found in the things that we own. It's not found in our careers. And it's not found in us. True success is not found in being the most popular, the most successful, the most wealthy, the most powerful, or the most popular. That, that's not true success. True success is found in our relationship with God. True success is found when we serve God and love God and faithfully honor Him and do what He's asking us to do. True success is found in how we relate to others with humility, with kindness, with mercy and grace, with honesty and integrity. When we do these things, when we are humble, and when we have that right relationship with God through Jesus Christ, then we can have true success. And God will enable us to grow and use more of what he gives us to glorify him even more. Maybe you need to learn that lesson. Maybe God's teaching you that lesson. Take it, accept it, 
because it's given out of love, not out of hate, not out of, of condescension, not out of malice. It's given out of love. God wants that relationship with you through Jesus Christ. And God wants you to have a right relationship with those around you through Jesus Christ. Will you put your life, your heart, your soul, your mind in the hands of Jesus today? God bless you.